Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 and part 2. Once we're done with metals, we know what is physical property of metals, what metals looks like, what the chemical property of metals we'll study uh, later. Now let's study what is non-metal. Non-metal is just reverse of metal. So they have tendency to gain electron. They have tendency to gain electron. So metals has an to lose electron and this guy want to gain electron. Correct. So metals want to lose and this guy want to gain electron. So this is my electron and this guy want to gain electron. And please note there are only few non-metals. If you see the periodic table, maybe the next two chapters, uh, most of the elements are metals. There are only few non-metals. I can say that carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and all the noble, noble gases, right? So, there are few, few non-metals as compared to metals. For example, carbon, sulfur, iron, oxygen, hydrogen, etc. But if you see, 50% of the earth is oxygen only. One particular non-metal itself is 50% of the earth. If you see, hydrogen and oxygen are the major constituent of ocean. So, non-metals are less in numbers, but they are more in quantity. Most of the things around us has non-metal, right? But the number of non-metals are less. The metal, there are a lot of non-metals, for example, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, zinc, but there are limited number of non-metals. But the quantity is more. 50% of the earth is oxygen. If you see ocean, uh, they are all hydrogen and oxygen because all water, right? So, and non-metals are generally solids or gases. If you see hydrogen is gas or solid, for example, carbon, except bromine, which is liquid. So non-metals are all solid and liquid gas, but most of them are solid and gases, except bromine, which is a liquid. Again, this is something we should learn, nothing to explain in that. This is all found by observation. Now, the next question that comes to our mind is why should we study non-metals, right? So the first thing, if you see the tree, the tree takes CO2, carbon dioxide, correct? And then it releases oxygen. Correct. Carbon dioxide is essential for survival of tree. Oxygen is survival for our existence, human existence. Right? So if you see, it's very critical. It's a very critical thing. If there is no carbon dioxide, no trees. If there is no oxygen, we are not there. So they are very, very critical, right? If you see the oxygen which you get here, we take it. It's very, very critical for our existence. Without non-metals, we will not even exist. The rocket, if you see the rocket which we use for uh, scientific purpose, the combustion happens, it happens because of oxygen. Even if you see any car and all, any car, anything, car or bike or aeroplane, each of these needs oxygen to burn because if there is no oxygen, it won't burn. If the fuel won't burn, it won't work. So the basic principle behind all these uh, moving uh, things are combustion, right? You take rocket, you take aeroplane, you take bike, you take car. All these work because of oxygen. If there is no oxygen, this won't work. So if you take your car in some planet which doesn't have oxygen, it won't work because the fuel won't burn. If you see the coal, coal has a huge implementation. Coal is a non-metal, right? So for example, in thermal power plant, it is used to generate electricity thermal power plant it is used for cooking in rural areas right so coal has a huge implementation coal is also used to create uh, cement or something there it is used in raw material for a lot of factories so coal has a huge implementation and that's non metal so if you see the diamond the, the ladies best friends they are also non metals the carbon diamond is nothing but carbon the graphite which is used for electrode in most of the batteries, if you open any battery, that 1.5 volt battery which you get in the market, it has a graphite and graphite is nothing but non-metal. The neon lights which you see, neon is non-metal. The, the helium is used in the, in the, in this uh, air, air, uh, what do you say, balloon, air balloon, so this is also non-metal. Sometimes hydrogen is also used and that's also non-metal. In the swimming pool, they used iodine. Iodine too for disinfection. That is also non-metal. 
sorry they use chlorine in this case yeah they use chlorine they use chlorine for disinfection of the swimming pool right so that is also non metal the chips has silicon in that i won't say silicon is a non metal but um, some people say silicon is a metal some people say it's non metal actually some people say it's the metal oil where it's it's neither metal nor a non metal so anyway i just put this so silicon is used in all the chips the microprocessors you see all the chips are silicon because all the transistors are made from silicon the fertilizers they use non metals ammonia and all the antiseptics they use non metals iodine yeah iodine is used in antiseptics so if you see non metal has a variety of uses you take the first thing is our home system the existence of plants and trees our existence and then you use uh, anything the generator the car the bike where the combustion happens right we use petrol to gen generate uh, power that much is also be used non metals the coal for electricity cooking diamonds for ornaments uh, the helium gas chlorine iodine fertilizers non metals has lot of application before we go into the physical property of non metals let's have a brief history of non metals metals if you see were found in 6000 bc lot of lot of, i mean it was found very early but non metals are not like that so if you see carbon is the only metal which was found in the prehistoric time and that too in the form of coal right and if you see after that it's all 13th century right there is no no non metal which was found in bcs the only one was carbon and then phosphorus was found in 1300 century and that it was used to make explosives and after that the next metal that was found or given name was oxygen and please note if you see oxygen name itself was coined 1774 not very old oxygen is 50% of the earth right but the name was not given why it is not visible it is not visible nobody knew it exists right but if you see gold silver it was all visible so it existed people could just pick it up and say okay no it, it looks like gold is orange color it looks a little bit so silver color but these things it's invisible right most of them are invisible in the gas form so it took more time to find this non metals if you see oxygen was found in 1774 itself and the name was given by lavoisier similarly nitrogen itself was found same year by lavoisier he did all the experiments and found that nitrogen is a gas and he gave this name chlorine was also found in the same year by shear sulfur is again a new another non metal which is found by lavoisier in 1777 hydrogen if you see uh, if you i tell that no that most of the ocean is hydrogen but still nobody found it that this is a gas called hydrogen because it's all invisible in 1783 this guy again lavoisier found this guy hydrogen so with this the point i'm trying to drive is all these metals non metals were found very recently not very old not even 250 years old and that's the beauty this thing existed but nobody found it right so Let's start with some physical properties of non-metal. First thing is it doesn't shine. If you take coal, it won't shine. Right? There is no shine in that. They are not sonorous. Again, you take the same example. Coal. I I see coal is the most uh, available non-metal which you can touch, you can feel. Right. So if you take coal also, it it won't make noise the way a coin makes. Right. They are not malleable also. You can't make a coal uh, thin sheet. They are not ductile also. You can't make a uh wire from the coal right they are very poor conductor of heat you can connect heat from that they are very poor conductor of electricity if you want you can take the setup what you can do is you can take this coal like this right put a battery somewhere here and then put some bulb something right you add this and you put you cross a coal from this and you will find that the bulb won't glow because the coal won't connect electricity you can do this and they are generally soft you see the coal is not very hard if you hit with the hammer it breaks right it's not very hard it's generally soft right they have low density if you see the weight of the coal if you take let's suppose this much big coal and you weigh this and if you take this much big iron you weigh this this guy iron will be much much more 
make them cold because the density is less if you see it's all porous kind of substance right generally the non-metals they are they are very very uh, low density substance although as i explained the properties of, of metals and non-metals the physical properties they are exceptional as i told because the metals and non-metals name is defined by this property of tendency to lose electron and gain electron right and then they found that okay they have some physical property but they have some exceptions also for example i told that i told that all the metals are solid but mercury is exception mercury is liquid mercury is liquid exception as i told that metals have high melting point but gallium and cesium has low melting point i told that generally iodine uh, non metals are non lustrous but if you see iodine is non metal but it has shine as i told that uh, uh metal is a non conductor of electricity but if you see in non metal chapter i told graphite graphite is a conductor of electricity and graphite is a non metal so if you see graphite is nothing but a form of carbon graphite is a allotrope of uh, graphite is allotrope of carbon diamond is again allotrope of carbon so there are so many allotrope of carbon so we we'll study a new chapter on carbon actually in the next chapter will be a different study on carbon also what are the allotropes what are allotropes Electrons are nothing but you have um, elements with which uh, have different properties, right? So they are same. They are all carbon, for example, in this case. So if you see, property of some chemical exist in two or more different forms. So they are all carbon. If you see graphite, diamond, coal, right? All are carbon. If you see, but all has different properties. this guy shine this guy is very hard this guy is good conductor of heat electricity this guy is bad conductor of electricity so all are allotropes of carbon allotropes are nothing but different structural modification of elements so the way the carbon is structure is different but if you see all has carbon element if you go to the atomic level all these three are combined of carbon but the way the structure is different and that's why it has different chemical properties right so the atoms of these elements are bonded in different manner so we'll, we'll learn more about carbon bonding and carbon allotropes in the next chapter but for now you just understand that is the exception that carbon they are carbon allotropes in fact graphite you can see graphite is a carbon and also if you see diamond diamond is also carbon and this is the hardest metal known i mean hardest substance known it's not the metal hardest substance and we say that metals non metals are soft but if you see diamond is the hardest substance known and is a non metal also if you see there is the exception that uh, sodium potassium and lithium they are metals but they are so soft and that they can be cut with a knife and they have low density and they have low melting point so they don't follow the physical property of i have used this word metalloid what is metalloid is nothing but as a elements which are neither metals nor non metals so they don't exhibit the property of metals and non metals again there is still a debate going on which all are metalloids which all are metals so generally uh, the six elements are commonly recognized as a commonly not recognized there is no concrete recognition on this commonly boron silicon germany arsenic antimony and thulium are called metalloids again there is still debate on that so because they are some people will say silicon is a metal some will say it's a non metal but generally yeah the 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 90% of the people they are on the agreement that these are metalloids because they have properties which are between metals and non metals they, they have the exact property the mixture of metals and non metals and they are difficult to classify actually as metal non metal now is the question time give the example of metal which is liquid at room temperature this we know it's a very simple answer The answer is mercury. Mercury is liquid at room temperature. Give the example of uh, metal that can be cut easily with knife. You know, it's sodium. We can cut with knife. In fact, potassium also we can cut with knife. Which is the best conductor of heat? We have told that silver is the best conductor of heat, and which is a poor conductor of heat. We have told that is the exception, uh, and that is mercury and lead. They are poor conductor of heat. The exception to that. Uh, generally most of the metals are good conductor of heat but mercury and lead are exception to that and they are poor conductor of heat thank you visit examfear.com to 
watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.